Have you ever wanted to check how your plant's climate is while you're at work and away from your home? Well, in this video I'm going to show you how you can build your own garden temperature, humidity and light level sensor that displays its sensor readings at real time on a website you can access all around the world. And here are the components you will need for this project. One ESP32 microcontroller. This is the brain of our project and it reads the sensor values and sends them to our database to be displayed on our website. You will also need one BMP280 sensor that reads temperature, humidity and pressure values. This sensor provides us with the necessary data to know the climate of our garden house. You will also need one 10 kilo ohm light dependent resistor and a 1 kilo ohm resistor. The light dependent resistor will measure the light levels in our garden. Coupled with a 1 kilo ohm resistor, it forms a voltage divider that we connect to our ESP32's analog input for light level monitoring. You will also need some jumper wires to connect the sensors to our microcontroller. And also one fretboard to connect everything together. In this block diagram you can see how the components work with each other. The ESP gets the power from a 4.2V battery. The voltage gets converted using a linear dropout regulator to 3.3V. The microcontroller gets sensor values from the light depending resistor and from the BMP280 sensor, which is connected to the ESP using I2C. So first let's connect the PMP280 sensor to the ESP32. We do that by connecting the VCC pin of the sensor to the 3.3V pin of the ESP. The ground pin of the sensor connects to the ground of the ESP. And the data wires, which are STL and SDA, get connected to the corresponding pins of the microcontroller. The sensor STL pin gets attached to GPIO22 and the SDA pin to the GPIO21. Next we set up the light dependent resistor circuit. Connect one leg of the LDR to 3.3V and the other leg to an analog input pin. In our case it's GPIO32. And connect a 1 kilo ohm resistor from the same leg to ground. Now that our hardware setup is complete, let's move on to the software side of things. We'll start by creating a Firebase project. Click on Get Started and then in the Firebase console hit the Add Project button. Type in your project name and click Continue. Then disable the Google Analytics as we do not need them for this project. And click Create Project. That's it. Now you've created your Firebase project. We'll just need to configure it. The real-time database gets configured by firstly extending the build section on the left and selecting the real-time database option. Click on Create Database and select where you want your database to be. Click Next and select in what mode you want to start your database. For this test we select the test mode which will make reading and writing data for everybody for one month available. Hit Enable and now just wait a bit, there you have it, your real-time database. For setting up the authentication click on Build, Authentication and then you click on Get Started. Under the Sign In section select Email and Password and enable it. Click on Save and add a test user. In this case we're using the test at testgmail.com and a test password. And then you just click Add User. To set up Firebase Hosting you need to select Hosting under the Build section and click Get Started. Now copy and paste the command shown here in a terminal of your projects folder and 
after it is done downloading, just hit next. Log in to your Firebase account from the command line using the Firebase login command. Now I am already logged in, but you would have to enter a email address and password. Now just initialize the project using the Firebase init command. First, enter yes. You want to proceed using space, you select the real time database option and the hosting service and just click enter. Set the default folder where you want your website to be. Hit enter and then configure the project as a multi-page site. We also don't want to automatically build and deploy with GitHub. And now if you make any changes to your website and you want it to be uploaded to the Firebase hosting service, you must deploy your project using the Firebase deploy command. This automatically creates a new version on the website and uploads it and hosts it via Firebase. To read the content of the database, to display it on the website, go to settings, project settings and under the general section scroll down to the SDK setup and configuration. Select CDN, the content delivery network and copy paste it into the body of your HTML page. This code sets up and initializes the database app instance. Now if you want to read the data from the database and display it on a website, you need to add some import statements, which import the dead database reference on value get set and update methods. Then we need to create a variable to get the real time database. First, you must make a variable to the element where you read and write the data to. You would also have to create set element with the same ID. Then you make another variable to store the reference to the database path on the database. If the value of the reference variable changes, the onValue code gets executed, which gets the value on the path and prints it to the console as well as changing the inner HTML of the element. Okay, so for the microcontroller code, we have to import some libraries, which are the Adafruit BME to AD library and the Firebase Arduino client library for ESP8266 and ESP32 from Mobits. After we've included all those libraries, we just set up some things. We have a NTP server which gets the time code and here in the setup we initialize the BME to AD sensor. We start the Wi-Fi using the Wi-Fi SSID and password. If you're asking, well, where do I find those? Well, they are in the credentials.h and after we are done initializing the Wi-Fi and are connected to it, we configure the NTP server and then we set the API key, email, password and the database URL to the corresponding variables of the credentials header file. Then we start the Firebase client using the config and authentication. If the Firebase is ready, we set the temperature using firebase.rtdb.setFloat and Firebase data object is set it to the slash temperature and what do we set there? Beam temperature. If everything worked, we say OK. We do the same for the humidity, just we only have integer values here. So we set an int. This obviously goes to the slash humidity. We set an integer, which is the BME dot read humidity. The same goes for the pressure, which just needs to be divided by 100 to get megapascals. For the brightness, we just read the analog pin 32. After everything here is done, we just set a timestamp using the get time here. And then we go to sleep for 600 seconds, which is 10 minutes and we enable the time wake up here 
which is the time to sleep, which is 600 seconds, times the microseconds to seconds factor, and then the ESP goes to sleep. After it wakes up, it goes through the whole setup and loop again. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments down below. And if you liked this video, you may also like this video. Make sure to like, share and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Bye!